You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You, live here from the Drone You studios. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and this is episode number 431, and as always, we are so appreciative that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. We're also appreciative of those reviews and all the new members mm. that keep coming in. If you're interested in becoming a DroneU member, just check out thedroneu.com. But today, our question is brought to you by Videoblocks. Hey guys, Nathan Alexander here, uh, Seattle, Washington, aka Batman Voice Guy. Last time I called, I was asking for advice on you know what I can do to just pretty much fly, and um, you gave me some good advice. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, pretty much said that it would be a lot more beneficial to me if I learned to shoot and edit and all that stuff. And I can say that. I've been doing that, and I'm I'm in love. I love doing that. Um, I'm just I'm full steam ahead. Buttery smooth certified is in my future. Um, so pretty much my question today. I'm at a crossroads, a bit of a crossroads, business and equipment. I have a new line of credit. I have about twenty five hundred dollars, and I'm wondering if I should focus on getting the business side of things totally official or if I should work on getting um, a bunch of equipment. I um, So all I have right now is just a Phantom 4, right? I'm not sure if I can do jobs just with that. Um, I'm just not sure. So should I get an LLC, get insurance, you know, um, get the 107, get a drone new membership, you know, totally just ramp up on that side and then focus on getting jobs strictly with my Phantom 4? Or should I focus on becoming Buttery Smooth certified, Drone U membership, Part 107, and a camera with lenses, lights, and all that? Um, if I go the camera route, I'm looking at the A6300. Um, I really like the A7S II, and I'm not sure if I should um, just, I'm not sure which one to go for. Uh, I know the A7S II is pretty expensive, so, um, you know, I'm thinking about the A6300, and that way, you know, I can get lenses and all that stuff and eventually work my way up to the 7S II. Or, you know, should I just go all out on the Canon 70D? Um, that does not shoot in 4K. I'm not sure if I need 4K. I hear that 4K is really good for post-production. There's a lot of benefits there right now. Um, you know, or should I just get the Osmo? You know, what am I doing? I'd like to eventually uh, maybe do some real estate, um, do some weddings. I like, I'd like a camera that can hold its own video and photography for now before I focus more on one of the two. Um, I would appreciate your help on which direction I should take this. Thank you. And just know that either way, I will be a Drone You member pretty soon. Wow. Um, very detailed question. Very good question. <clears throat> Extremely detailed. Yeah, very good question because I think a lot of people are, are having these questions and wondering what do they do with the, the money that they have? So How do they get going? Something I, I want to say, and uh, I've been wanting to say this for quite some time, in a lot of the Facebook groups that are out there, people say, oh, you just bought a Phantom and you're trying to make money with it. Like, you're an a-ho. Like, you're stupid. You're not learning. But the key difference here is that if you're starting with just a small drone like a Phantom, but you're willing to learn the rules, regulations, and how to do it right, there is nothing stopping you from, in time, being just as good, if not better, than a large majority of the drone pilots that are out there today. Sure. Um, that's where I started. I started with just a Phantom 1, mm -hmm. and I didn't have enough money to buy another battery. I mean, like, seriously, and look right. where I am now, you know? Uh, and I, I really do believe that with persistence, willingness to learn, the ability to listen, 
and just the right attitude that you can you can do anything with just a drone. Literally just a drone. Yeah. I mean, literally, when the Phantom 2 came out, I, there was no Osmo. Sure, there were gimbals. You know, you had the Ronin whatnot. I couldn't afford that. So I would literally, you know, fly my drone through the house. Mm-hmm. I would hold it. I remember you did it at my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would hold it around, uh, you know, and I would make it work. I would, right. you know, I would use what I have. And I think that, you know, this is something we talk about in the book, uh, which is the owner versus member mentality or the client versus uh, owner mentality. And that is the uh, the true owner always finds a problem to the solution. Mm-hmm. The member or the client always finds someone to solve the problem for them. And you've got to be the owner mentality, which yeah. means you use what you have to create solutions for people. Well, in this case, he's got a P4. That's no yeah. slouch. Yeah, seriously, I P4 mean, is better than P2, 3, and 1 put together. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, there's definitely a lot that, that he can do with the P4 that he has. I, you know, I understand the question is I've got this budget. Do I focus on getting the business set up? Do I focus on getting more equipment? And I, I really, in this case, based on the way that he asked the question, I don't think it's an either or. Yeah. I mean, I think... you got to have the right foundation for your business because if you don't have the right foundation for your business and you're not bringing money into your business, then you have no way to justify the expense of more equipment. Yeah. And and on top of that, number one, he asked about the 107. He, he added that in both sections of the question or both parts of the question. So I think he gets... That's a no-brainer. Yeah. He's going to have to spend a little bucks. bit of money, 150 to take it, assuming he'll pass it the first time. He sounds like the kind of guy that will. He's going to have to spend a little bit of money to, to study. Mm-hmm. Um, and the most economical way to do that, frankly, is through Drone U because the resources are there. By the way, it's a third of the price of everything else out there that I can find. So anyway, keep going. Yeah. So that's a definite thing that, that you need to do. As far as getting your LLC set up, I think people get a little bit intimidated by that. It's really, uh, you're in Seattle. I don't know the laws of Washington here in New Mexico and many other states that I'm aware of. It's not difficult at all. I mean, you can literally go to your secretary of state site, corporate division site, whatever, and get the forms and pay the fee and do it yourself. Um, Ideally, I mean, I'm a CPA, so it's easy for me to say that. Ideally, do you want to talk to somebody with a little bit more knowledge? Probably, but you could probably sit down for an hour with a CPA and get a little basic understanding of what you're going to need with your LLC. Let's, uh, my, my point is you're not going to have to spend a fortune getting that set up. No, not unless you do something wild and crazy where you're like trying to avoid certain tax liability and you decide to open up a LLC in Montana, which is a very popular thing right yeah, now. And, but that's $1,500. Right. And, and the reality is I don't think we would... And again, we don't know we're everything about you, that. Nathan, but generally speaking, we're not going to recommend that. And one thing that, that you didn't mention that is probably, well, not probably, it is really high on the priority list is your insurance. So you're going to have to include money out of your budget for that. Yeah, really excited to have Verify actually on the show next week to talk about that. Cool. So. Yeah, because we want to, in fact, we have a question that we need to get to from one of our listeners about what do I need to do with my insurance? Where do I go get it? So we're going to address that later. But... I, I guess the point, as far as I, the, the one that I wanted to make in response to the question is, you need to do both. Um, but ultimately, I guess it'd be kind of counterproductive to spend a bunch of money, now we're kind of talking theoretically, to spend a bunch of money getting a business set up, but then you don't have what you need to go actually do the business. Yeah. So I, I probably wouldn't approach it it's that a little, way. a little give and take. That's what it was for me. Yeah, so. it is a little, a little give and take, but... I think you can do both. You don't have to spend a fortune getting the business set up. But speak to the equipment questions that he had. He was asking about the A6300, <laughs> which I know you love. I love. I've got one myself. Um, gosh, it is my favorite camera. And here's why it's my favorite camera. Um, I almost bought the A7R Mark II. I know there's the A7S Mark II. But I would want the A7R Mark II because of the photo capability. Um, but when you can shoot the same quality of video on the A6300 that you can on the A7R Mark II, I decided, you know what, that APS-C sensor is bigger than most Canon full-frame sensors. Hmm. Uh, It's bigger than most Canon sensors, period, uh, other than the new, you know, 5D Mark IV or S, whatever. Uh, A large majority of the old cameras, the 6D, the 7D, the 70D, all the stuff that you see vloggers using, it's a bigger sensor than all of those cameras. Right. Um, now that being said, uh, you know you're shooting 24 megapixels raw, 20 20 uh, pic- megapixels with JPEG. 
Um, but I love the camera because it can be good for portrait. It can be good on a tripod for video. It can shoot slow mo, and it's not cropping down on the sensor. You can shoot, f uh, you know, full 4K. You can use S log, S log two. Like the the capability of the camera is unbelievable. What you get for eleven hundred dollars for the body. You That's know? crazy. On that note. He asked, I'm not sure, or he mentioned, I'm not sure how important 4K is. It, it's probably pretty important. Okay, here's why I shoot everything in 4K. Um, number one, if I want to, if I get, let's say I shoot this whole room and I only want to, you know, focus on the camera that's filming us right now and the monitors and everything that's behind it, I can crop that down. So I literally have four HD screens inside of one 4K image. Mm -hmm. So if I want to crop down just to one specific image, I can do that. And if I'm outputting to regular 1080 HD, which let's face it, most of the time you are, right. um, you're not losing any resolution. That's that's actually so cool. So you can literally just pick in the frame where what you want to show without losing any resolution. So you can blow it up and then do that. Yeah. That's I mean, amazing. You can do so much with it. Um, and also, you know, if you're ever shooting stock footage, you get a lot more money for 4K shots for that same reason. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot more flexibility uh, with the shot if you want to show certain things. Um, and, you know, there, the amount of technology that's out there, you know, if you've got infinite focus and you just want to put focus on one thing and blur out everything else, well, with 4K and with Final Cut Pro, you can be like, mm, let's defocus the background in right. post. Like, it's so cool, you know? Yeah. So you can get professional quality shots without ever shooting professional quality video just by how you manipulate it in post. Um, that being said, um, I think, you know, I have the 6300. So when I went and shot a wedding, I used the Z camera E1, shot okay. 4K. I used a GoPro Hero 4. Really? I used the 6300 and I used the Osmo. So four camera shoot for a wedding all by so myself, by the way. <laughs> let's just say, for conversation's sake, you had to choose two of those to do that very same job. Which two would you choose and why? Well, let um, you did not have them. They've hired you. It's family, friend, whatever. You want to do the very best you can for them, but you don't have the resources to have all four of those cameras that you said you just used. You can uh -huh. only use two of them. What would you use? Well, if we're going to say that I'm fixed on a budget, right? Let's say I've got two grand budget. I wouldn't get the 6300 because I could get two... Uh, Z1s okay. and an Osmo and that way I'm shooting both angles of the wedding you know you've got the the bride you've got the groom so we can see both wedding parties with those two cameras and then use the Osmo for audience shots emotion shots nice sliding shots you know and the Osmo has so much flexibility because it's stabilized but you can also use and I need to buy a new Osmo FYI Rob um, <laughs> uh, you can use you know the app to actually control the camera but the Osmo only has like a lifespan of a year because I've got sand in a couple of the motors and sometimes it's starting to so hmm. yeah <laughs> I'll be buying that one don't worry so, anyway we'll I'm probably gonna out. get the Osmo plus if you want to know the truth so if I were him and I'm on this budget I'm getting a 6300 and an Osmo plus because the Osmo plus has zoom I honestly see no point in buying the DJI Oz, uh, Osmo for mobile because, and I haven't used it, so I could be wrong, but because the reason I love the Osmo is I can literally pull the app up and move my finger and just get perfect cinematic motion whatever way I want to. Right. You know, and I don't have to be there with the camera. I can put the camera on a mount, suction cup it to the wall, you know, wrap it around a tree and still use it with my phone wherever I am. So I can be operating another camera and mm -hmm. behind that and then also be operating, you know, the Osmo. And sure. the Osmo is by far, hands down, my favorite camera. So hmm. yeah, I've got the new vlog coming out and I've been shooting a lot of shots with the Osmo and I really want my theme for the vlog to be buttery smooth shots no matter what it is. So it'll right. be smooth motion, whether I'm talking, moving around, drone stuff, whatever it is, it's going to be buttery smooth the whole time. Okay, so, cool. So 2,500 bucks, do the things you need to do to get the business established, which is relatively minimal. So 6,300 Osmo, use the P4 you've already got. And you don't need anything else, period. You should be good to go. And I'll be honest with you. You can go to LegalZoom. You're going to spend a lot more money setting up your LLC. Uh, if you just learn about your local and state government's LLC, you're going to save a lot of money by that. Sometimes there's not even a fee to set up an LLC. Yeah, so, yeah. and by the way, one of the reasons or the circumstances under which the LLC becomes more complicated is when there's more than one of you in the business. Yep. So you've got partners. 
in which case the operating agreement becomes significantly more important. Not that it's not important for a single member LLC, which it sounds like you would be, Nathan, but mm. it's not horribly complicated when you're by yourself. There's some there's some things you need to talk about, and we can't go into those here. You're mm. going to have to talk to some uh, there, somebody who knows. There's uh, there's one little piece of advice I'd like to give here. If you're going into business with your friends, I would avoid it as much as possible because they're your friends, and you probably want to keep them as friends. I would say if you want to work with your friends, hire them as contractors. I'm not saying don't work with your friends. Yeah. I'm saying hire Just them don't as partner. Con- don't partner with them. Yeah. I'm partnered with you, and I'm partnered with Tim, because I believe at the end of the day, you're going to do what's ethically and morally correct. Sure. Because we've hit roadblocks where we're all looking each other in the eye, sweating bullets, ready to punch each other in the face, <laughs> and we're like, you know what? We know what's right here. We know yeah. what we need to do, and we're going to f- do it. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and, and the reality is we, we started out, I'd say we're friends now, but we didn't start out as like good friends that decided, hey, let's go into business together, we right? We better be friends because we need sun bathe on the <laughs> roof, so. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, Nathan, it sounds like you're on the right track. You're thinking of the right things. Don't overcomplicate setting the business part of it up. I think you can do that and still get the equipment you need based on what Paul's telling you to do. I think you're in good shape. Yeah. And um, what I would do is uh, if I were setting up business, get your LLC, get a Square account so you can take money right away. Um, so easy that way. It's, it's it's stupid easy. People are like, why don't you do PayPal or Chase, Paul? And I'm like, because when you set up a Chase account, it's like, hey, let me get your FEIN number. Or let me get your address. Let me get this, 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 and this. It's like, you old geriatric people, I'm so sick of your ways because <laughs> yeah, it's You didn't so, need to go there. It's so easy. That e- was not it's, necessary, it's easier. Paul. Well... Chase CEO, hey, it's too <laughs> difficult. Anyway, Square, so get your LLC, get Square, then go take your test, and while you're you know, taking your test, try to get jobs lined up after that test, so once you get your temporary certificate, you're ready to go. I would say 6300, Osmo Plus, you already got a P4. Anyone who tells you you can't make money with a P4 is high, um, or they don't want you to try. Just remember, if you're like this caller and this listener and you're just getting started with drones, just remember, you really can do anything that you want to. It's gonna be more difficult with the Phantom 4 than say an Inspire or a lar- larger drone but it's absolutely possible and you're gonna learn the skills you need to be an exceptional pilot as long as you keep an open mind, you're willing to listen to other people, but don't take everyone's opinion as gold. Um, And you're just willing to be persistent and work hard. Absolutely. I I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, sounds like a good summary to me. All right, and other than that, Don't forget to know your value and believe you can do it. It's so important. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. If you love looking at other people's photos and you want to see maybe a photo of your own, go to instagram.com and check us out at the drone you. If you've ever found this show helpful, valuable, or you think it may help someone else, don't be afraid to share it. And don't be afraid to give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. Absolutely. And I do want to mention, Paul, real quick, because we haven't mentioned it in quite a while. That is, we're always running our free annual membership contest. We are about 20 episodes away from our next giveaway, which is you send in a question. It gets put on the air. In one of the episodes, you go into a drawing of only 50 people. We do it in 50 episode increments, and you have the opportunity to win a free annual membership to drone you. So get those questions in. Definitely get them in. That's going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.